Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call the May 2nd, 2022, regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Commissioners to order. Uh, we will start with the invocation that will be delivered by Reverend Lim Hardison from North Spray, uh, North Spray Christian Church. That will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance that will be led by uh, former County Commissioner Bobby Stanley. So if you all would please rise for the invocation. Father God, we come here at the close of this day to thank you for your love, your goodness, and your blessings. Thank you for sparing us through the storm of yesterday. Thank you for this wonderful county that we live in. We thank you especially for those who have gathered here in this room tonight that make decisions and lead in so many important ways. We pray, Lord, for the leading of your spirit in all that's done and said here tonight that would be to your honor and your glory and to make this a better place to live, to serve you. For it's in Jesus' name that we ask it. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank both of you for uh, helping us out with uh, the invocation and the pledge. Next on the agenda is a proclamation. I'll hand it over to our county manager, Lance Metzler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is a proclamation for uh, proclaiming May 2022 Older Americans Month, whereas Rockingham County includes a growing number of older Americans who contribute their strength, wisdom, and experience to our county, and whereas counties benefit when people of all ages, abilities, and backgrounds are welcomed, including and supported, and whereas Rockingham County recognizes our need to create a county that provides the service and supports older Americans' needs to thrive and live independently for as long as possible. And whereas Rockingham County can work to build an even better county for our older residents by planning programs that encourage independence, ensuring activities are responsive to individual needs and preferences, increasing access to services that support aging in place. Now, therefore, the Rockingham County Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim May 2022 to be Older Americans Month. We urge every resident to recognize the contributions of our older citizens help to create an inclusive society and join efforts to support older Americans' choices about how they age in their communities. This, the second day of May, 2022. Mr. Chair? Thank you. And gentlemen, uh, do we have a motion to approve the proclamation that was just read? Mr. Chair, move approval. Okay, we've got a motion by Commissioner Richardson, second by Commissioner Powell. All in favor, let it be known by the sound of aye. 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 And... Uh, Ladies and gentlemen that are here, um, we do have, and this could be for the uh, older Americans or for, for younger folks that have trouble uh, hearing, we do have some hearing uh, devices that would assist if anyone is having any issues with hearing what's going on tonight. Uh, next is a presentation by Ms. Janice Wilkinson. Ms. Wilkinson? Good evening to you, the esteemed Board of Commissioners. I introduce myself to the new, newest member of the Board, Commissioner Powell, at the Western Rockingham Chamber of Commerce in April. It certainly was good to be out in the community that evening. I had been cocooned in my house for a long time due to COVID, like many of my age so concerned about the ravages of the virus. So please accept my excuse for not appearing here before you last year, 2021. Believe me when I say I was active over the previous year, as was the planning committee of 13 members. We Zoomed throughout the year, added new members, and said goodbye to others who left due to family caregiving issues or moving out of state for a new job. In fact, we had our first meeting in person last week at our care in Reedsville after many months of meeting online. Although constrained from meeting in person, we carried on the business of planning, advocating, and budgeting home and, care, home and community care block grants, 
funds. The virtual meetings were set up by our county planner, India Simpson, from PTRC. As you are well aware, the HCCGB funds help meet the needs of an aging community. Our planning committee's budget committee decides how to disperse these monies to ADTS, Aging Disability and Transit Service, and the three senior centers to best meet the needs of the community. These funds are not the only financial resources needed to complete the services so desperately needed to keep our seniors safe, healthy, and in their homes as long as desired. As an advisory committee to the Board of Commissioners, our members take seriously our commitment to the aging population of the county. And as chairperson, I've come to admire what we've done over the past two years. Attached to the brochure that, I was, that was given to you is a breakdown of the past two funding years by service type. This gives you a multi-year perspective so you can see where trends are funding. These services you see are home care and community block grant services specifically. I'll give you a few seconds to look over those numbers. Now to ADTS service statistics for the year 2021. These numbers are specific to the HCCBG funds exclusively. However, please be aware, HCCBG funds are just one funding stream going into these programs as I stated earlier. And I'll tell you the statistics now. Senior nutrition programs served 73,620 meals to 471 individuals. Leaf, day, leaf adult day services, 2,295 days of adult day health daycare provided. In-home personal care services, 24,676 hours of personal care assistance provided. If you have any questions, Kathy Powers, Executive Director of ADTS is here to help me answer. Thank you, Kathy, for pulling these numbers together for me here tonight. Again, in reference to the previous numbers shown here, you see three senior centers that have committed, th have three committed directors that serve our aging population. Carla Huffman, Garden of Eden, Karen Riddle, Madison Med and Senior Center, and Cindy Baines from Our Care. These ladies have not only supervised and budgeted for their centers, but have coordinated senior games, a three-week multi-competitive sport contest throughout the county. Thank you, commissioners and the three centers for budgeting this service to our county. Not only are games available, I just learned that there is another component called Silver Arts. Ribbons are given out in this competition also for seniors who don't want to compete physically. Nursing home clients are also included in this arts competition. Carla supervises this program and for the first time is having a reception for the seniors displaying their works on May 17th at five o'clock at the Eden, Singer, Eden City Hall on the same night as the city council meets. Thank you, Carla, for going the extra mile to celebrate the seniors' talents. For those of you on the board who are interested in economic benefits to the county, I would like to announce that the archery competition for the state senior games is being held at Boneyard Archery in Madison. That's a big deal for Madison and the county. I would also like to recognize m and senior director who came on board at the center at the same time that the planning of the entire county games was in full swing. What an ambitious task for our newbie. She accomplished this with vigor. That was Karen Riddle. And here tonight, we have a Senior Games Ambassador, Angela Staub, who not only takes her participation in the game seriously, but also participates in U.S. track and field championships. She did also in New York City in April, her 75 to 79 relay team set the national and world record for the four by 400 relay. I asked her to bring her medals tonight. Where are you, Angela? Thank you. Congratulations, Angela. So I would. 
So I would say that she's not only ambassador for senior games for Rockingham County, but also represents our county on the national stage and will travel to Finland this summer to compete on the world stage. Thank you, Angela. For modeling to us that age is not a hindrance. Besides budgeting money, we took on the monumental task of editing and revising our committee's bylaws that were originally written in 2007. At my last presentation, the task had not been completed, but today I'm pleased to say that you as the board did approve them and we are moving forward with the guidance and proactive committees set forth by the bylaws. With the approval of the bylaws, our name changed to Rockingham County Planning Committee for Older Adults, Adult Services. The other name had something about elderly in it, which denotes another image of growing old, which I prefer not to accept. According to our bylaws, we are tasked with advocating for older adults. One, day, one way we're demonstrating this is by integrating members and plans in committee groups such as livable communities, specifically livable Rockingham. Livable Rockingham conducted listening sessions throughout the county, developed community partner relationships, and formed an action team to discuss goals and objectives. This year's goals are to identify a co-lead organization, roll out AARP's age-friendly community survey, and apply as a livable community through AARP. Once the application is submitted, we will have two years to develop and implement the aging plan. The Livable Rockingham Initiative is coming to fruition at the most reasonable time in collaboration with AARP North Carolina. The governor's hometown strong team is moving toward North Carolina becoming a livable state. The criteria for becoming a livable county and state creates an inclusive society, which means that people of all ages, abilities, and backgrounds are welcomed and supported. These words I just lifted out of the proclamation that was just read. May is Older Americans Month. All the words that I heard when the proclamation was read really tell how Americans, we, how all should live together. Plus, the declaration presented three ways to achieve a livability status for older Americans, which I believe that we as a planning committee are trying to achieve for the county residents through budget and an aging plan. Thank you for allowing us to have the declaration read today and for allowing me to present tonight. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. Okay. We do not need any approval of that no, uh, financial audit or anything, or financial annual report. Okay. Uh, next, uh, gentlemen, is the approval of uh, tonight's agenda. Uh, do we have a motion to approve tonight's agenda? So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Hall, second by Commissioner Travis. All in favor, let it be known by the sound of aye. 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 Next on the agenda is the consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda uh, tend to be non-controversial in nature. Uh, if you have any questions about any matter that's on the consent agenda, please reach out to our county manager, Lance Metzler, or administration. They'll be glad to get you additional information on any item on the consent agenda. With that, do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Powell. Second. Second by Commissioner Richardson. All in favor, let it be known by the sound of aye. 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 Any opposed? Next on the agenda is the public comment period. We do have rules related to the public comment period. Uh, Mr. Manager, if you would uh, read those rules, please. <clears throat> public comment period shall be for the purpose of allowing members of the public to uh, present any matter pertaining to county business or items on the Board of Commissioners agenda. Remarks shall be addressed directly to the Board of Commissioners and not to the staff, the audience, or media. The chairperson shall open the public comment period. Any speaker who wishes to speak shall approach the podium and not speak from his or her seat. Each speaker shall clearly state his or her name and physical address when he or she approaches the podium. Any citizen desiring to speak should be allotted three minutes. Citizens be allowed to yield their time on a specific topic by utilizing one more attendee's time. This will allow no more than six minutes. Your time will be displayed on the monitor in front of you. The time clock will start with three minutes and less yielded time to six minutes. You will hear a, a beep at one minute to alert you to wrap up your comments. If you are to yield your time or time is yielded to you, then please let the chair know in advance. Speakers appearing will not be allowed to campaign for public office, promote private 
uh, business ventures or use language of a uh, personal nature which insults or demeans any person or which, when directed at a public official, is not related to his or her official duties. The Board of Commissioners may accept written comments in lieu of oral statements. Written statements can be delivered to the County Manager's Office. Mr. Chair. Thank you. We do have some people that signed up tonight for public comment, and the first one is Sheriff Sam Page. Good evening, I'm Sheriff Sam Page. Uh, my address is 645 South Madison Street, Eden, North Carolina. First of all, uh, I want to say thank you to all our commissioners, Mr. Chair, and our, our commissioners. Thank you for what you do for us in Rockingham County. I uh, also want to thank our county manager. We're blessed we've got a great county manager, and I appreciate you, Lance. Um, two weeks ago, there was some conversation about some compensation. The conversation was up, and I thought about it, and I said, you know what? Our county commissioners have dealt with the same thing we've dealt with. We came out of a two-year situation in Rockingham County where we went through a lot, a lot of things we've never experienced before. Coming out of that, the county commissioners helped us with some compensation for our employees, and we appreciate you. I want to tell you, we appreciate that. Every one of us in Rockingham County government, every one of us department heads and the sheriff, we're dealing with a situation trying to hire and retain people, and it's very important. I come before you today and tell you and remind you, as we all know, that each and every one of our county employees are valued in Rockingham County, and we appreciate them because we couldn't do the job to protect and serve the citizens or provide the service for the citizens without their help. So I appreciate you. I know you're getting ready to go into consideration on the two-thirds pay study, and I would just ask you to do this, that when it comes in and you make decisions on what we're going to do as far as the pay scales and everything like this, please keep in mind fairness marketability, make sure that we're competitive with our surrounding areas as best we can, with the best ability you have. And I said, that, and that will go a long ways. But I appreciate you keeping all the county employees in mind when you make those decisions. And the last thing is, is we've done these pay studies before. And we usually run them out about a few years, but we don't seem to sustain those. Let's make sure that when we do do this and we agree to these pay studies, let's do something we can sustain so an employee knows three years, five years, 10 years down the road, they know where they stand. Because I'm like you, I wanna make sure that we maintain good, a good quality force and we look after all of our employees. I appreciate you, I look forward to working with you all in the upcoming session. And Mr. Messer, also to you, thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you, sir. Next, Bobby Stanley. Stanley 628, Young Road, Stoneville, North Carolina. What I want to talk about, my understanding over on 2073, there's about 1,400 houses that's going to be built in the next three, four, or five years, uh, which is fine. But it's about tax structures. 1,400 houses, if you average one, it'd be 1,400 more students. I'm talking about one to a family. If you got two, it's 2,800. It's going to be a Probably a schoolhouse too got to be built. And sales tax or in industrial development is very, very important. That sales tax, two and a quarter cents, say a quarter for the community, call it two for us. We have got to have commercial development that stays in the county where it's tax day. I'm talking about big stuff, to where these people, the biggest part of them, are going to go to Gifford County if they're not. And Gifford County, it gets $20 million out of a quarter cent. We get almost somewhere around $2 million. They're not 10 times bigger than we are, maybe 12 times bigger. It tells you how many people from Rockingham County is going to Gifford and spending their money, and that would include Randolph. This is, to me, is sort of bad. It's been that way for a good while. That per capita tax, that half a cent, really turned that tide. That per capita was there for, we're going back right good ways, was there to balance out rural versus urban counties. And it's not there no more, folks. It happened with that Medicaid trade-off. They took a half a cent. Uh, it, it, you know, growth is, is okay, but we have to have it done right. And Rockingham County, I was on that 73 committee. Another Mr. Meeting 
we went to a lot of places with that. It's a good thing. I went down it today. Is that the whole thing? No, you still got a minute. Huh? You still got a minute. Okay. Uh, I went down 7 to 3 today, but I take my wife to the eye doctor. It makes it so much easier. <laughs> and it's good, it's good for business. I want to add one more thing if I quickly can. Duke bought Dynegy out, I guess, 12, 14 years ago. The tax structure is much different. Bethany Fire Department lost $75,000 through that transaction. I voted four, three cents over there. They was in a heck of a pickle. Never got one call at the house over that issue. These fire departments today are really volunteer fire department. My boys, a fire chief in Shiloh, they're getting in trouble, folks. They're probably going to need some guidance from him. They cannot get enough of volunteers to do what they have to do. And thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, Shelby Ryan. Hey, good evening. I'm Shelby Ryan. I live at 144 Woodhaven Drive in Stoneville, and I'm the executive director of the Rockingham County Tennis Association. We are a community tennis association that's founded in 2014. We're a nonprofit supported by the USDA North Carolina and the USDA Foundation. Our mission is to support and promote tennis in Rockingham County. So May is National Tennis Month. Um, National Tennis Month is a nationwide grassroots effort driven by the USDA and its industry partners to celebrate tennis. For 31 straight days in May, players, local coaches, facilities, retailers, tennis manufacturers, and more will be driving awareness about the sport and its benefit. National tennis participation has seen significant growth over the past two years with people turning to the sport to stay physically fit in a safe manner. According to the latest Physical Activity Council's participation report, more than 22.6 million people hit the courts in 2021. During May in Rockingham County, youth and adult tennis lessons will be offered to the public by Pat's Tennis Aces at the Deep Springs Country Club, by Beatrice <coughs> Estefanis at the Eden Family YMCA, and there's a free community tennis clinics at J.C. Park in Reedsville provided by Chuck Faint's program, Tennis Excellent Program. Tennis is a sport with many health benefits, can be played for your entire lifetime, appropriate in older citizens month, um, easily accessed with courts in every community. Across Rockingham County, you can find courts are open to the public at J.C. Park in Reedsville, Moorhead High School and Bridge Street Recreation Center in Eden, Rockingham Community College in Wentworth, and a brand new six court tennis facility uh, built by Rockingham County Schools at the Western Rockingham Middle School in Madison. We encourage people of all ages, whether you're a lifelong player or just being introduced to the game, to pick up a racket and take to the courts in May to help us celebrate National Tennis Month. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ryan. And that is everyone that signed up for public <clears throat> comment. Uh, next on our agenda is a presentation from the school system as far as an expenditure from uh, the dedicated sales tax. And we have Ms. Sanja Parks. <clears throat> Mr. Metzler, Mr. Chairman, Board of Commissioners, tonight I'm going to update you on some of our capital and our restricted sales tax projects for this past year. Our last presentation to commissioners was in January of 2021, so if anyone wants to go back and look at the projects that we did prior to that time, certainly feel free to do so. I want to mention that Dr. Shotwell is not able to join us tonight due to his stepfather passing away. All right. So this past year, we replaced our shore tail phones in our classrooms and in offices. Uh, this, the phones were about 10 to 12 years old, and the software was outdated. So you can see pictures of the phone models that we installed. 
We also upgraded all of our servers and switches to the newest software, and this project came in under budget. We spent $171,456.53. Our restricted uh, sales tax funds also replaced paging systems. We replaced speakers and wire if needed, and we repaired bells and clocks. You can see a list of school sites here on this slide that we repaired. Uh, also, this project came in under budget at $142,901.80. I will be asking for additional paging systems tonight at the end of this presentation. We have continued uh, our door security project that we started with you a few years ago. Our district was awarded the COPS grant as well as the North Carolina State Safer Schools grant to continue any additional door access uh, stations with cameras. So we have made a lot of progress in this area and we're certainly proud of that. So thank you again for helping us have that seed money to get this project going. We have also continued the classroom interactive projector upgrade that was started with commissioner money uh, of $321,976.46. We placed this equipment in grades three through five, if you remember that. Uh, this was that seed money to get us started. We're continuing this project uh, using ESSER funds. And ESSER means that's the elementary and secondary uh, school emergency relief funds. Uh, we have purchased an additional 476 interactive projectors and whiteboards. And our maintenance team will hope to install uh, all of this over the summer. We're still waiting on those projectors to arrive. All of our boards are in a safe location, so we're looking forward to starting that, uh, that project this summer. We have started the installation of the uh, mobile two-way bus radios. Uh, we work closely with Rockingham County Emergency Services, specifically the 911 communications in times of inclement weather or any other emergent situations that could impact bus travel or student safety. And mm -hmm. I just want to personally thank Rodney Cates for all of his support with this project. Uh, we have purchased 200 mobile radios to be installed on transportation vehicles, school buses, and service vehicles, 15 portable handheld radios, and four base stations. Again, I want to thank you for the UHF assets, that's the antennas and the coax cables. This has been a huge uh, cost savings to our projects. So again, thank you for that. With so many critical events occurring in and at schools, we're excited about the possibilities of this partnership to enhance safety of our children. This next part I'm really proud of. We, uh, in June of 2020, we signed a contract with Johnson Controls to start a guaranteed energy performance contract. We completed the project in June of 2021. We did all the installation during the pandemic. This project was $8 million of improvements through energy savings. We changed all of our lighting in the district to LED. We replaced aerators on all of our faucets across the district. We improved flushing mechanisms on all of our restrooms to reduce water usage. And we changed out all of our china for improvement uh, to improve the overall facility infrastructure. We also um, made some improvements at Dillard with HVAC and the control systems. Uh, we uh, changed out the chilled water uh, piping re-insulation at Rockingham County High School this past summer. And then we installed submeters for sewer uh, charge deduct at McMichael High School. With all of that being changed, this is our results. We, um, they guaranteed us that we would, for the first year, was $574,414. We have exceeded that guaranteed savings by 11%. So as of right now, we're at $637,375, and we're not even through the entire year. So year one, great um, gains, and uh, I hope to continue to see this as we uh, pay back these energy savings through um, the things that we changed with LED lighting and water and so on. 
to talk a little bit about our ESSER funding. We have some indoor air quality projects going on. We have allotted $12 million to this initiative. Again, this is the elementary, secondary uh, school emergency relief funds. Phase one of that uh, includes replacement of our controllers and sensors in 16 of our school facilities. We are replacing five rooftop units and controls at Stoneville, 19 rooftop units and controls at Reedsville High School, and they just arrived. We ordered about a year ago. And then the controls upgrade at Rockingham County High School and Lincoln. This is about a $2.7 million project that we started about a year ago when we received these funds. And then the rest of this is about $9.3 million uh, of high needs that we have with HVAC at Rockingham County uh, Middle School. Pretty much the whole scope of work there is working with the whole mechanical system. It's very outdated. And so we're replacing uh, a lot of uh, the HVAC in the main building, building two, four, cafeteria and gymnasium. McMichael, we have a failing cooling tower right now, and our board approved for us to go ahead and get that on order. It's going to take about 12 to 14 weeks to get it here. And then Moorhead High School, the media center, building and auditorium, Chiller, is very outdated. And then the New Vision um, Media Center building, uh, we are looking at two rooftop units. So this is how we're at using or utilizing some of our ESSER funding to improve indoor air quality. I want to let you know that we are in the midst of doing a land use study uh, to determine where we need to go with school sites for the future. In the month of April, we started collecting data uh, of our student records and information, the geocoding uh, from RCS and from administrative data. Uh, this month, the month of May, we're in the process of setting up interviews uh, with our planners across the, uh, the city and a county uh, to gather information. And then in June and July, uh, they will be working on a new school site analysis and attendance uh, boundary optimization. Uh, that they will put together to give us uh, some information on what they believe, looking at uh, our capacity and where we're going, what we need to do uh, for the future. So uh, anybody that you would like for us to interview um, or uh, have input into this, certainly let us know. We want to be very open about uh, all of this information, and, um, and I just wanted to let you know that, that this is in process. Also, another thing that we have going on is MSTA traffic operations study. Flashback to 2019, uh, if you remember uh, last year in January, I shared this with you. We were in the process of doing an extension over at Lincoln Elementary. This was a driveway extension. And we worked with the Municipal School Transportation Assistance uh, Traffic uh, Study Operations Group. And they are currently doing a study for us right now. Uh, we've been on the books with them for a long time. And we are doing a study at Wentworth and Rockingham County Middle and the high school. And what they're doing is they are uh, going on campus and they're doing traffic counts. They will then return back to us and give us their recommendations on what we need to do to address uh, the, um, the, the traffic situation in this area. And I do want to mention that part of a North Carolina general statute, the State Department of Transportation will reimburse us for on-site improvements. So this will not be a cost to us. Um, the, the department uh, provides full reimbursement for the associated costs incurred by the school, including the design fees. So this work will be estimated to be scheduled out about a year from now. So we will uh, work um, this summer to get everything uh, in place, take uh, the drawings to our board. Our board will then review, provide feedback, and then we will be uh, ready to, to make these adjustments um, to this traffic um, situation that we have in the Wentworth and in um, Rockingham County area. Now I'm just going to go through a few of our uh, capital and restricted sales tax projects that we have um, been working on this past year. Uh, this is the Moorhead High School band area. Uh, we had to update this area. We removed all the asbestos. We updated the flooring, the lighting, the sound panels, and the projectors. And this project was $50,957.65. The Moorhead Gym roof, uh, roof, we placed the roof because it was leaking really bad. So then we had to update the gym floors. Uh, the new gym floor lighting uh, from the energy performance contract 
We removed and disposed uh, the water damaged flooring, installed plywood, and then a new flooring in the area. And uh, this project really turned out well. So what you have here is a new roof, new lighting, new floor, and Moorhead is rocking right now. $29,730 for this floor. Moorhead Media Center. I want to thank all of you that had an opportunity to come out and take a look at this media center. We received a donation of $308,455.89 from Homer Wright. We certainly appreciate that donation. Uh, this project also includes some other costs, such as asbestos abatement. Uh, we had some electrical, air monitoring, technology, painting, lighting uh, that we had to do in this area. It really turned out nice. And again, I want to thank you for coming to the ribbon cutting. Students love this area. We are in the process of starting the McMichael High School Media Center project. Uh, the McMichael Family Foundation donated uh, to us uh, $320,000 for this. Uh, the project is celebrating their 30 years of the school being in existence. And so we are in the process of starting this project as we speak. Uh, we've been working on the design, the color palette, and everything, and our team is in there um, starting this project now. We hope to have this ready when we open up school. So we're excited about this. And again, thank you to the McMichael Family Foundation for the donation. The Monroton gym, uh, school gym floor was cracking due to a lot of moisture in this gym, so we had to do a little investigation on this. We had to install an interior footing drainage system to control some of the drainage that we were having and some of the moisture issues. Uh, we used preferred sports flooring. They installed the Tarket uh, slip floor uh, flooring due to the high moisture, and this project turned out great. Uh, $65,785.31. That's the flooring and uh, the drainage system that we had to put in. And that was this past summer. These are all of the roofs that we have uh, replaced um, since 2018. Uh, we have... Um, these, yeah, these are all the ones that we have completed since, since 2018. And since then, we have replaced 10 roofs at about $2.8 million. And so now I want to share some that we just completed recently uh, within this past year. We uh, completed over at Central Elementary Gym Roof. Allied Roofing completed this roof uh, project. Uh, we budgeted $110,000 for this gym, and we spent $65,249. Holmes Middle School Bar Roofing completed this uh, project for us. This is the media center and the connector roofs. You can see in that upper uh, little corner with the yellow, the media center and then the connector roofs. We budgeted $193,000 for this uh, roof replacement, and we spent $153,780. Western Rock Middle School sixth grade building roof Bar Roofing completed this sixth grade uh, building uh, this past December, and we budgeted $325,000, and we spent $330,716. So this was the beginning of things beginning to change, supplies getting a little more expensive. And then McMichael High School Lobby Roof, we completed this project. Professional Roofing Services ended up getting this contract. And we did this one over the summer as well. We budgeted $170,000, and we spent $85,950. These are the roofs that we are currently working on right now. And... Um, Right now, what we're seeing when they come to the table with when our bid openings, we are seeing roof prices that have varied between $23 a square foot to $44 a square foot. And so we're having a hard time getting the insulation. Uh, the estimated time to complete any of these roofs that you see right now is about one year out. Um, these roofs will be replaced with the OSB roof deck and the thermal insulation. And that thermal insulation piece is the part that we're really having a hard time getting right now. So as you can see here, if you look at Reedsville, we budgeted $389, and then the lowest bid was $393. 
So we're, we're over budget. And you'll notice that for the main building as well. And then we just did a bid opening for Moss Street that I'll be sharing with our Board of Education uh, this upcoming Monday in the same kind of scenario. So I just want to mention to you that how we're working this is there, there is a statement that will be in all of our contracts. And this is pretty much what it states. Due to the current material shortage and fluctuating cost for materials, the awarded contract price will be established by adding or deducting material costs, taxes, delivery expenses to and from the proposal amount submitted to the notice to proceed. So this means that if the prices go down, you're gonna show us exactly what you spent for these materials. And then if it's, if it's different, then we're gonna get a different price. If it's more, then we'll have to look at that again. Um, and then do documentation supporting these changes in the cost will be required and agreed upon to both parties prior to the execution of the contract. So that's sort of how we're handling things right now in this unknown time of trying to get bidders to come in and bid the work and then trying to be fair about it whenever it gets here, how we're gonna handle things. So that's sort of the process that we have set up in moving forward. And it seems to be working with the bidders that are coming to the table um, with us right now. All right, the next project was the Reedsville High School Crow's Nest. Uh, we replaced uh, the shingle roofs on the press box, the restrooms, and the ticket booth. And uh, we replaced this uh, crow's nest as well for $10,800. I want to thank you again for the uh, maintenance vehicles. We ordered seven maintenance vehicles a year ago. They just arrived. Uh, and we also ordered a dump truck and a van. And they have not arrived, so we're not sure when that's going to happen. It could be another year from now. Um, but uh, we are very thankful for the maintenance trucks that have rolled in. And then the Western Tennis Courts. We completed our Western Tennis Courts in February of this year. Um, we have the six courts. And uh, this included the site preparation, demolition, grading, erosion control, asphalt paving, uh, sewer demolition. We had to move the sewer line uh, before we started this project and construction. We applied for two McMichael Family Foundation grants and we received $150,000 from the McMichael Family Foundation for this. I also worked with the USTA all along this journey but did not get the funding due to the pandemic. Uh, but this, I can tell you that the designs and plans and everything was approved by USTA and it met those guidelines. We just didn't get the funding for that. So that brings us me to tonight's request. Uh, these are the projects that our Board of Education approved at the April board meeting. And tonight I am requesting your approval for these projects that's listed on this, project, on this list. I would like to mention that the Field Turf NFL Foundation Grassroots for the Reedsville High School program, that is a matching grant and that is contingent on them getting that particular grant. I mentioned earlier in the presentation that we had a lot of intercoms and speakers that needed to be repaired as well. That is, again, a safety kind of issue, so we want to get that underway. And then we have some playground equipment out at Dillard um, that, that has some safety issues. I work on a media center over at Holmes Middle School, uh, an elevator that needs to be uh, repaired over at Moorhead High School. And, um, and then I've talked about the turf, and then we have some furniture for the cafeteria at Rock High, as well as a wrecker body. Uh, DPI is gonna cover the cost of the, the wrecker chassis, and then we will take care of the rest. So that's almost like a match as well. So at this time, I'm asking approval uh, of, of this list uh, that our board approved at the eight, April board meeting. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Parks. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have any questions of Ms. Parks? I got some. Hey, Ms. Parks, thank you uh, for coming. And uh, uh, we got a lot done in the last couple of years. Uh, so that's real good. A uh, big change from what it was years before that. But uh, one of the questions I saw, we, we had a lot of savings uh, on certain projects. Do you know uh, around about how much savings we had? I do not have that figure before me, but you're right. We did um, have a lot of savings on roofs and on our intercom systems, uh, and that money just continues to roll back into that restricted sales tax so that we can use for further projects. That, that's what I wanted to know. So it goes right back into restricted sales tax, so yes. that means you still have money there. How much money is there right now? Uh, that would be a, a Pat Galloway question. I'm not 
don't have that figure on me. Sorry. So uh, with that money sitting there, mm -hmm. because we haven't approved for it to be used anywhere else, right? Correct. So how are you are you going to use that money for these projects, or what? How are you going to do this? These will be the restricted sales tax funds that we'll be using for this. So you understand? And then what I'm whatever saying? we have left over. Then I'll be coming back again to say I'd like to get these projects done. Right, that's what I want to make sure. Because I have another list right after this one ready to roll. Right, that's what I want to. So yes. you got savings sitting in there now. We don't know how much, and now you're asking for additional 1.5 on top of whatever you got in savings, right? In savings and restricted sales tax. Right. Do you know, Lance? I don't know. I don't know the number. It's several million. I mean, I, I could. That's again. That's a pack question. That's several million already there. And you're asking for additional $1.5 million for this projects here. Yes. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? <laughs> it's millions in restricted sales there now because they didn't use it. I, I think she said that's been rolled back in. It just rolls back in. Rolling it back in? Yes, maybe, it does. Maybe. So they can't spend the money until they come to us with the request. Exactly. exactly. So maybe I don't understand your question. So thank, thank you. I okay. appreciate it, Ms. Park. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> so, Ms. Parks, this money can be used for construction and or renovations and or other capital uh, improvements or needs. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, for me, uh, when when y'all, y'all being the school system, vote uh, to present something to us, I'm taking that as... Uh, the school board uh, prioritizing uh, these uh, requests as the most pressing needs of the school system for um, capital needs, whether it's construction, renovation, or uh, any other capital purchases. So with that said, I mean, I am uh, certainly um, appreciate your board bringing these matters to us. Uh, gentlemen, uh, do we have any other questions before I ask for a motion? I'd ask for a motion and have it contingent upon any grant money that has matching funds uh, for the school system receiving those uh, matching funds uh, before the money is expended from the restricted sales tax. Is that appropriate language, yes, Lance? Sir. Okay. Motion, sir. Okay, motion by Commissioner Richardson. Second by Commissioner Powell. All in favor, let it be known by the sound of aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, Ms. Parks. I just want to thank you for all of your support of Rockingham County Schools. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, under new business, I believe we do have at least one matter under new business, and I'll hand that over to Lance Metz. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we have under here a proclamation proclaiming Law Enforcement Appreciation Week as of as May 15th through May 21st of 2022 in Rockingham County, whereas nationally there are more than 800,000 law enforcement officers serving in communities across the United States, and whereas the Rockingham County Sheriff's Department has 101 sworn officers and 50 civilian employees, all of whom work daily to provide protection, aid, and to improve the quality of life and safety of Rockingham County citizens. And whereas everyday Rockingham County Sheriff's deputies and law enforcement officers in our municipalities put on their badges and go to work to protect the lives and property of Rockingham County residents, therefore choosing to expose themselves to known and unknown dangers every day. And whereas our law enforcement officers throughout Rockingham County and our municipalities are committed to continued training, skill enhancement, and interagency coordination, which makes them vital members of our community and county. And whereas our law enforcement officers work tire tireless, tireless, tirelessly and selflessly for the residents of Rockingham County, regardless of any personal danger, fulfilling their mission to maintain the trust and support of our citizens, while keeping neighborhoods and communities safe. Now, therefore, in honor and appreciation of the invaluable service provided by Rockingham County Sheriff's Department and all municipal law enforcement officers in Rockingham County and across the nation, the Board of Commissioners proclaims that May 15th through May 21st, 2022, as Law Enforcement Appreciation Week in Rockingham County encourages citizens to show their respect and gratitude for those who carry out the critical role in protecting and ensuring public safety for us all. This is the second day of May 2022. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, with that, do we have a motion to approve the proclamation? I'll second. So moved. 
Motion by Commissioner Hall, second by Commissioner Travis. All in favor, let it be known by the sound of aye. 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 Uh, any other new business? No, sir. Okay. Then Commissioner Comments, Commissioner Travis. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being here. Uh, there's a lot been going on in the county, especially uh, concerning uh, salaries, pay raises, bonuses. Uh, uh, I just want to speak on my behalf. I, every county employee, I, I really appreciate them. They're, they're very critical to county government. Uh, I know we talk a lot about EMS or 911 or sheriffs, which is very important, but every county employee we have is very important because they, they do a critical role for the county. And I know we, we've said some stuff about EMS, uh, especially the last meeting, but uh, there's a lot of things going on that I hope you realize is going on. Uh, the private sector is really driving a force, especially with salary and our critical positions like EMS, 911, sheriff. When the private sector starts offering way more than the salary we offered, then that makes the county adjust. And that's what we're going through right now is we're doing our study, we're trying to adjust. And I hope that everybody, especially county employees, just stick with us. I, I think this board and Lance and the staff are going to come up with something uh, that we hopefully, like the sheriff says, we will get very close to be in competition with other surrounding counties. But uh, I, I don't want none of the uh, county employees think that just because we're not talking about you don't mean that you're not important. Uh, you are, and I, I, want, I want to stress that. And I think this board up here really uh, you know, has a lot of faith in our county employees too. Uh, so with that, I, I hope, you know, this budget coming up is going to be a stressful one, but I think uh, we're going to make a lot of, a lot of strides. And I, I hope you, uh, the county employees that are thinking about leaving that they at least give us a little time to see what we can do. Uh, it's a budget process, and we do this every year, so the budget has to be approved by June 1st. So give us time, and I think I got a lot of faith in the county manager and, and this board to, to come through. I know we've been talking about it a couple of years, but you got to understand, uh, you're talking about a lot, a lot of money that we're getting ready to look at. So be patient. Uh, with that, uh, also, if you care about your EMS or Sheriff's Department or especially your fire departments or rescue squad, reach out to them because uh, the fire departments and rescue squads are really struggling with volunteers. If you have an emergency at your house, you expect someone to be there. And if you don't have volunteers to fill those uh, positions for them fire departments, who's going to show up? EMS might take them 10, 11 minutes. Who knows? So it's very important that we start teaching our kids the, the value of volunteering in our community. It's so very important because uh, our community looks out for each other, and that's what Rockingham County does. We look out for each other. So please spread the word. Get involved with your local fire department. Get involved with your rescue squads and volunteer at your church, whatever you need to do. But it's very important that for that element of community to still strive. Thank you. Right. Uh, Commissioner Powell. Yes, thank you. Um, tomorrow... Uh, it's an exciting day in Rockingham County. At 10 o'clock, we will be meeting over at the college to break ground on the Workforce Development Center that's been talked about and worked on for four years. Back in 2018, I was honored to be invited to a meeting where a vision was explained to us. And at the time, it's all it was was a vision. And a, a lot of folks, including the county commissioners, uh, worked together, and we... Uh, we're going to see that vision come to reality tomorrow with this, with this groundbreaking. It's never a bad thing when we invest in the citizens of our community, and that's what we're doing tomorrow. This will allow our uh, men in the community that maybe want to retool themselves to make a better wage to better serve their family uh, to do that. It will it'll allow uh, single moms who may need to go in for skilled training to better prepare uh, for their children and their future. And it'll also give our students the opportunity to go somewhere to uh, pr provide themselves with a skill uh, through the Workforce Development Center. In addition to that, it, it's also an opportunity for uh, industry in our area to utilize that facility to have the college train their workers that potentially are coming to work for them um, so that we will be one of the leaders in North Carolina in workforce development, which is 
is what we need, and uh, we're looking forward to that. So I would encourage you tomorrow, if you can do that, be out at 10 o'clock over at the college and uh, take part in that groundbreaking. I believe that history will prove this to be one of the best decisions that Rockingham County has ever made. I, too, would like to thank our employees uh, that work here for us. We do uh, cherish your, uh, your work here. We, we thank our emergency services. We are definitely living in much more difficult times and different times, and uh, we will continue to navigate through that and do what's best for our county employees and our citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Powell. Commissioner Hall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate you being here, Dr. Parks. Thank you for the presentation. And let's not forget the reason for all this and the reason for the money is these students. Our kids are so valuable. And I know we're talking about our older adults tonight as well, but I want to talk about our kids for just a moment. Uh, there have been two productions this past week, one at Rockingham and one at Reedsville. I happened to attend the show at Reedsville yesterday. And let me tell you, I was blown away by the talent these kids have. They built the sets. They ran the lights. They ran the sound. There was some in the pit. There was some doing stage management and, and singing and acting. What talent these kids showed. And so we are just really blessed in this county to have such wonderful kids. So we appreciate that, and we appreciate the schools taking care of these kids and providing a place for them to learn and to prosper. So thank you for being here. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioner Hall. Commissioner Richardson. Well, Commissioner Hall, I certainly appreciate that. Uh, every time I have a problem with my cell phone, I go to one of these younger <laughs> people and, and get some good help. Thanks to all the attendees here. Um, I'd still like to make a plea. If, if there are citizens, and there are citizens out in Rockingham County doing wonderful things as volunteers, and we like to recognize them publicly. So if you have a citizen here in Rockingham County that is making a contribution such as that, that we need to uh, note and bring forth to the public, please uh, let Susan Washburn know. She can be reach 342-8102, and she'll be glad to help you out on that. Um, Glad to see uh, Sheriff Page and also your able assistant there, Colonel uh, Farah here, and uh, we've got past uh, Commissioner uh, Bobby Stanley, who uh, we look forward to your comments all the time, Bobby. Thank you much. And the president of the Rockingham County Republican Party is here, as well as two past members of the Rockingham County Board of Elections. Aren't you glad that you're not still on the board to, to right now? <laughs> But we appreciate uh, all you folks being here and taking part in what's going on. Uh, Mrs. Wilkerson mentioned the PTRC. Most of you are not familiar with the PTRC, but your senior citizens really get services out of them. It's the distribution point for all sorts of monies from uh, Meals on Wheels to the, the recreational pro programs that uh, you heard described. So. Uh, uh, if you get a chance to participate in either the, our senior services group or any other of our committees, again, talk to Susan Washburn. She'll be glad to get you uh, an application, and we'll be glad to see you be part of making a difference. Thank you, sir. Yes, Dr. Parks, uh, certainly thank you for your presentation tonight and keeping us informed as to uh, what's going on and the projects you've completed. I uh, do want to point out that uh, many of the comments you heard tonight and actually the presentation from Dr. Parks, um, the comments from uh, former Commissioner Bobby Stanley, and uh, the comments from Commissioner Don Powell about what's taking place tomorrow is all tied to shopping locally. Uh, every bit of that is tied to the sales tax. So as you shop locally, you're helping the school system uh, with their capital needs. You're also uh, helping the community college and uh, many other things. So we, we appreciate the people that shop local uh, and how you are in doing that, giving back uh, to your local community. And that concludes our meeting. Our next meeting 
is scheduled for May the 16th here at the Governmental Center. Uh, with that, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Right, motion by Commissioner Hall, second by Commissioner Powell. All in favor, let it be known by the sound of aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs>